Hello and welcome back to Dusting History. Today I've got uh, Captain Felix of the Army Aero Corps and I really like this picture. He looks very Professor Fate. If uh, you've seen The Great Race you'll know what I mean by that. And I thought this would be a pretty simple picture to clean up but it actually is a lot dirtier than you'd imagine. So after cropping it down to a size I think is worth working on, I'll put a curves adjustment layer here just to bring a little bit more tone or contrast into the picture before I start working. Now I'm going to duplicate those two layers, collapse them down and then run a neural filter pass on it and using the photo restoration uh, part of the neural filters you can see by default it does a face enhancement which I think really makes it, the image look kind of cartoony so I generally turn that off but what it's good for is just taking some of the more aggressive grain from the old film stock out of the image before I get stuck into the really fine dirt I'm just going to very quickly using the uh, remove tool go through and clean up as many of the little dots and spots as I can. Paying particular attention here to uh, Felix himself. Um, actually, you can see the brush is quite small. I'm um, really, really honing in on all the tiny little fly specks and there's an absolute ton of them. I'm not focusing on the sky or the um, fuselage of the plane that much because I intend to, to run a little bit more of an automated process to do a larger cleanup on those areas. With most of that done I can turn my attention to the finer dots and when I zoom in here you can see how really dirty this image is. So I'll create a duplicate and then go to the noise filter to the dust and scratches panel and playing with the radius and the threshold, try to knock out as many of those uh, bits of speck and dust that I can. Now what you can see is it does a terrible job on, on him, but that's, I don't care about that. I only care about what it's doing to the sky. You can see there how much it's uh, averaging out his face. So I'll put a, a mask on that layer, turn the mask to black so we only uh, paint through the areas we want and using a very large brush at 100% you can see I can blast away most of those dots and spots very efficiently. Now the beauty of this versus just painting a flat grey is it kind of keeps the detail of the sky intact whilst there's still some areas of damage that I'll go through and fix up later I can selectively just paint this through uh, and protect some of the original tone of the sky as you can see I'm attempting to get some of the detail off some of the other parts of the um, cockpit but undoing it once I've done a little brush stroke and realized that it's revealing too much of that blurred uh, image underneath so I'm really just keeping it to the sky and to the paint on the um, on the plane. I posted this picture on Reddit and somebody actually commented that this was only seven years after the Wright brothers which is really a pretty amazing statistic. So with that process complete, I created a new layer and using the remove tool began trying to get rid of some of these larger spots, but it was introducing its own kind of noise. So I deleted that layer and collapsed everything down into a 
a single layer up the top here like this and then using the patch tool cleaned up these areas more effectively. Now what the patch tool does is you draw a marquee and slide the patch across to a clean section of the sky or whatever it is you're cleaning up and it takes the um, the grain or the kind of the, the, it's hard to describe but it sort of takes the image underneath and moves it and dumps it down where your uh, marquee was originally but then it colour grades it or lifts it to match the surrounding area. It's a really good way just to sort of flatten things out a little bit if you've got some clean areas that you can reference. So here you'll see when I finish I toggle between before and after and whilst that stuff didn't look very apparent at the time, once it's gone you can see what a difference it makes. Now I'm going to turn my attention to this uh, piece down the bottom. So I'll create another layer here, adjust the lumens up and then using a freehand lasso tool just draw, roughly draw this shape out. And then I'll mask that and then open up this uh, adjustment layer again and move the sliders till I think the lumens of that little area roughly matches the rest of the image. I'm not too concerned by the overshoot or the wobbly hand line that I generated there. I can just use the remove tool to clean that up. And again, while this looks pretty okay, uh, it's still got a fair bit of artifacting in there and you'll see I'll, I'll turn back to that later and clean it up. As is the way with these kind of jobs, once you've actually gotten rid of most of the really bad damage, all the little things that you thought you could live with now look like they become the new bad, right? <laughs> They're the stuff that's left that starts to bug you. So I'm just going to go through and take a lot more of those little spots off the, the part of the image that I didn't clean up with the uh, uh, dust and scratches filter. Now with that image saved I'm going to head over to Topaz Photo AI and do a sharpening filter on it. Now this isn't fantastic, I mean it's done a pretty good job. What I have uh, do is just generally go through the different AI models there through the lens blur or the motion blur and just see which one gives me a cleanest or the cleanest read on, on a character um, without introducing too many artifacts. And I think this lens blur one's done a pretty good job. It's not great for the whole image, like his hand's gotten very sharp and there's some other things, there's some of those more defocused areas are now a little compromised. So I'll take it into Photoshop and stick it on top of my image and then worry about how come the luminance jumped so much. Maybe I did something, maybe you spotted me doing something stupid. Um, anyway, <laughs> I did something that made it get darker. So I'll just do a little adjustment on the image underneath. and then sort of get them in a more similar space. And now with that mask turned black, using a white brush, I can actually rub through into the topaz sharpened uh, image, but only in the areas I wanted, mostly focusing on the areas of the image that were already in focus, or mostly in focus. and also just playing with the opacity layer so I don't necessarily want it at 100%, I want some of the original grain still to be under there. And this of course has introduced a little bit of noise in the sharpening so I'll just go through and try and feather that out without you know, losing any of the character of his face hopefully. One thing I like to do at this stage on a bright image like this is put an adjustment layer on and really crank it down and what you can do is see that in the bright areas there's a lot of damage and, and um, artifacts still visible on an image where you would have thought they were not uh, there at all. So using a remove tool underneath that color correct so it doesn't 
add to the color correction it only works on the image below I can go through and just get rid of some of this uh, see there's fingerprints on the edge of the frame there there's a big area of I don't know if that scratches or someone washing the image also that repair I did earlier you can see has got some striations across it so I'm just getting rid of some of those now of course when you take the color uh, the curves correction off this image all this stuff would almost be non-existent anyway but it's just nice to know that you've cleaned up the image as best you can a lot of these finer sort of diagonal lines that I'm painting out here I'll just have a go at some of the worst of them and, and not sort of worry too much about the rest of them of course I could keep going for hours but I think you know for my taste I think that's about enough intervention on this image he's quite the character I really, I really like him and I hope you enjoyed uh, this cleanup and I hope you uh, learned something uh, I always learn something every time I do it as I always say and um, thank you so much for joining me